there we go. We are live on Facebook. And if someone could go share that into our group, our, our, our shred group, that would be awesome. Really appreciate it. It's on my wall right now. If you can go share it so that we can hit up our community there. Um, welcome, everyone. This is the ER Shred Come Alive call. My name is Sean Escobar, and I'm grateful to be with you tonight. We've got a great call tonight, and I'm excited for you guys to all hear from our, our most recent participants here. Um, by way of announcement, I just wanted to announce that Jesse James Jamnick, our ER Shred nutrition coach, he actually recorded uh, an incredible, he's not on tonight, he's with his family tonight, but he, he recorded an incredible introductory video um, explaining what ER Shred is. And it's very thorough, it covers all the bases, and it cuts right to the meat. Um, I would encourage you guys to use that. It's eight minutes long and very power packed, full of information. Um, I, I would encourage you guys to use that. Um, it's as short as we could get it. Uh, you know, I know that most people these in this day and age, they have a three to four minute uh, attention span, right? But uh, we could only get it down to eight minutes because, you know, we just have to explain what, what on earth ER Shred is um, and why it is so incredibly impactful. Um, so use that. It's on our YouTube channel and use that as you share ER Shred with other people to educate, to inform, and to um, influence people to get involved with us so that they can better their, their well-being and become part of our tribe. Um, what else? Crystal, my my sweet wife, um, as many of you know, she's been very public about uh, her explant surgery, which uh, she had her uh, breast implants removed. Uh, and I think it's been almost, I think tomorrow's two weeks, two weeks. So the good news about that is that uh, she got her drains out yesterday. Um, so that was significant. Uh, and she's doing incredibly well. Uh, in fact, if if you were to say, how has this leading up to, to the actual event of getting them out was very stressful um, for her, for, for me, um, because I felt for her so much. Um, but, you know, it was it was something that we both wanted done because, you know, we we actually felt like there was some some ill effect there on her well-being. Um, and she's, you know, she's been very open about that, about her experience with her implants and so forth. Well, mm -hmm. the cool thing is, is that she's already begun to see some significant improvements um, in her well-being, in her health, as a result of, of getting the, the implants out. Um, so we're, we're really excited about that. And I just wanted to let everybody know that, you know, she's doing incredibly well. She's very happy. Um, She's, it's just been fun. It's just been fun to see kind of her light up and, and her get excited about, you know, this, this new chapter for her. Um, ER Shred, many of you know the, the whole journey around this, and you know that it's been about identifying what doesn't serve us. Uh, that's what ER Shred has been all about. Eliminate, reset, shred, and shred was never intended to be about getting shredded. It truly wasn't. Um, shred was never about, you know, looking like James. <laughs> but that's a that's a good healthy side benefit, you know. And I do like it when people come up to me and they go, "Wow, you're really shredded," you know. And and I I like the way that feels. I like I like to be lean. I like to have endurance. I like to be strong. But the word shred was all about, you know, identifying and shredding limiting beliefs, shredding um, dogma, ancient dogma that didn't serve us, shredding um, addiction, shredding bad habits, um, you know, shredding past conditioning and even like self-image um, type 
I should make a co-host so I don't have to keep admit, admitting people. Shredding, um, you know, even things like we shred um, the complex that we have around our self Im our self image. We we shred all that. We just shred it because we're all wonderful and we all have value. And you know, that's what ER shred is about. It's not about being one of the beautiful people. It's that we're all beautiful in a unique way and we all have unique gifts and talents. So we shred all this garbage, just get rid of it. And when we strip it down, if you imagine the protocol stripping down the diet to a base, and if, if you also consider we do the same thing mentally, we do the same thing around our belief systems, we do the same thing, um, you know, some of us call it spiritually, we strip it all down, just strip everything down bare, and then start to reintroduce. And you'll find that once you've hit reset, you begin to interpret. That's the gift of ER Shred, the ability to interpret. So everything that Crystal and I have experienced leading up to today is all part of ER Shred for us. And even her explant surgery is very much a part of ER Shred. So I'm excited to hear from the people that we have sharing tonight. I want to show you this new mug. <laughs> I, uh, I found someone who makes these handmade, um, this is a handmade ceramic mug. And she only made a handful of them. Um, and I'm going to offer them up, let people buy them. But I thought it was fun. A great way to drink either your coffee, your green tea, or your bone broth, what have you. It's just a fun way. And it's, it's uh, you know, just really cool. So I'll let you guys know um, when those become available here pretty quick. Patricia, Patty, are you out there? You might need to unmute, actually. I will ask you to unmute. Am I unmuted? You did good. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Don? I'm wonderful. So, Patty, where are you um, calling us from? Utah. 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 I am. All right. Very cool. And uh, we just asked these questions by way of introduction. Who was it that originally shared ER Shred with you? Actually, my cousin in Omaha, Nebraska, Joyce Gokenauer, there's a team in Omaha that's shredding and they're adorable. And they're like in their 70s and they're healthy. I nice. saw it. I, I, they're, they look way younger. I thought that was pretty awesome. Isn't that great? Oh, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to, if you want, if you could, you know, make sure they're posting and active in our group and, and also okay. just let them know, you know, we'd all like to cheer them on. Love to have some of them on this call. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. So that's great. And um, what is your passion in life, Patty? Um, well, I have a great family. That's a big passion. Mm -hmm. I My passion is aging backwards now. You know, I'll be 68 in June and I'm all about going backwards. And so, but some of my loves are, I like to play the piano. Um, I like to learn new things. I yep. like to be adventurous. I actually have a hair salon. So that's Oh my fun. gosh. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I also, I have the impression that you're also pursuing, you know, sharing isogenics, ER shred beyond yourself. Is that, is that right? Actually, that's probably my, probably my number one passion right now. The, the health journey I've been on. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been pretty crazy because I was hurt a couple of years ago. I couldn't walk for oh boy. a long time during COVID. I couldn't have surgery. I fell off a stool, cracked my hip. And I seriously walked with a walker, weighing a lot. <laughs> so let's let's dive right into all that, could we? Sure. Yeah, that's exciting to to learn about you. Um, what? Yes, just start with that. Like, how did this journey begin? When did it begin? And um, you know, how did you become involved with Isagenics? What are your results? Like, can we just dive into all of that? Sure. 
Okay, first of all, I have to tell you that I did isogenics a long time ago. Uh -huh. I never, I, I would lose weight, but I didn't know how to do it the right way. And so Tammy Hess actually is a friend of mine that I knew be, in my pre-life in isogenics. And because I have a hair salon, she, she approached me and she's like, you know what, you need to do this collagen thing. That's what got me jumped on the bandwagon first. I noticed it curved my sweet tooth, which I had a really big one. And that was weird. So I can say now I haven't had a dessert for 18 months. I'll take one taste. I don't have a desire, but it wasn't, it was, um, then my cousin talked about the shred and then I got interested in, I thought I could do this. And so you guys are fantastic. I mean, I just, I would watch you. You're so much fun. Your group's amazing. I joined your room and, you know, I'd follow you guys and I thought, this looks like it could be hard, but you know what? I'm a little bit addicted to that 11 day shred because I love meat. I'm such a meat eater. And um, I just felt my body shifting. Can I just hold up a picture of me before I started this? Please do. Yeah, please do. My before life. Can you see it? It's kind of blurry. Wow, I do. I do see it. I, I Keep keep talking because. Okay. Um, okay, anyway, okay, really quick. No, what I'm saying is. When I talk, what happens when I talk, it, it removes the picture. Oh, okay. You, you okay. see what I'm uh, saying? So oh, sure. no, we, we all, we all saw the picture and okay. tell us about that. Like you then what was going on there and, and how was your quality of life and everything around that? Well, I've always been a really happy person. I actually thought I was always looked okay because I like clothes and stuff. I knew I needed to lose a lot of weight, but I just carried myself a kind of confidence but I had a really good friend of mine talk about keto a couple of years ago. Right. And, um, you know, that's what you, during COVID, everybody was home and just mm -hmm. like on calls and stuff. So I was aware of the high protein thing, which I'm a carboholic in nature. And so when I found out about the shred, I thought this, this kind of is in that path. And so the shred for me, though, doing an eight, a whole 11 day shred with mm -hmm. the cleanses that are involved, I felt my body just shifting and it yeah. was pretty amazing. And so, you know, I would release, I think my first shred, I lost nine pounds or released nine pounds the first nine days. Sure. My friend measured me and I just, inches were just happening. They were going. And so, yeah, so it was exciting. The one thing about me with the shred, I kind of make up my own rules sometimes. So I have jumped back and forth to a 30 day reset back to a shred, but I'm really consistent with high protein. Um, I, there's something about ER shred though, that mentally it's crazy. My, my thoughts are so clear. So oh, that's fantastic. That's exciting. Well, that's wonderful. And, and how does that play over the results that you've seen the benefits? How does it play over into life? How's life differently now? Oh my gosh. So my boys are, I have six sons. They're very active. They're healthy. They hike. I mean, they're just involved in one of my sons had a CrossFit gym. He sold it because he has a different business, but um, I have now gone hiking. I'm hiking in the mountains. I swim. I, you know, I, in fact, I went out and hiked in a ravine with all this water and kind of caught heck from people like you can't do that the waters will rush in and kill you and so it's so freeing that I can do these things you know yeah. I work out I I've done CrossFit I I just can move my body yeah. I know I was so broken that I'd have to take my walker and it was hard to even get up on a curb and now and even climbing stairs and now I'm just on the stairs I'm going places and I don't have that I just am so free my mind is so free. I mean, I just thank God every day. Like, wow, I can totally move. So amazing. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I, I do have, I want to show you. So I posted this the other day. That's in two legs in one pants. <laughs> one pant leg. <laughs> My granddaughter took that picture and I posted it. I had all these people going, okay, what are you doing? I, I guess I have to find out what you're doing. You look so, to me, you look, uh, you do, you look so well and you look so um, radiant and, and, you know, you look so natural, like, like you are meant to be the way you are. And, 
Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because when I meet people and they've had that significant of a transformation in their life, I, I actually do, I'm kind of taken back. I'm kind of like, no, nah, you, ne you were never, you were never really like that. What do yeah. your friends and family think about your result? Because they witnessed all of this firsthand. Well, they're, they're extremely proud of me. In fact, I have clients because I'm a colorist. They'll come in every few weeks sometimes. And every time they walk in, they said, every time I see you, you're smaller, it's wild. Yeah. And I actually just cleared out all these clothes that were too big for me. I just, they're gone. I'm not going there again. It's done. Yeah. I have to tell you though, I didn't grow up heavy. I, I mean, I was, you know, I didn't at all. And so it was, I had kids fast and it just kind of everything just got out of control, I guess. But so I knew because I took dancing when I was young, I was very, very active. And so losing that is paralyzing. So when people can't move, it's paralyzing. And so I knew I had to get back. I just had yeah. to get. Back. How long were you? I mean, when you say get back, that that would indicate that for there was a, a period of your life where you lost mobility. How long was that? Two years that I lost mobility. I was hurt, but I couldn't have surgery because I got hurt before COVID happened. And I tried to do all, because I'm kind of into natural things. I kept trying all the natural things and it wasn't working. And so finally it's like, okay, you're going to have to have a hip replacement. And so it gotcha. was two years. Two years. Gotcha. Yeah. And I know what that does to the mind and to the emotions and to the self-esteem. It's really, oh, yeah. yeah, that really is something. Well, Patty, we are so unbelievably proud of you. Um, do you know by chance, just for the sake of the listeners out there, do you know overall how much weight you've lost in total? 108 pounds. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Lots guys, of a, guys, 108 pounds. That is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. Oh my gosh, that's great. And did, did you did you by chance measure all the inches as well? You know, I did, and I actually should have added them up to tell you tonight, but it was a lot. No, There's yeah, a I'm sure. I'm I mean, sure I've had to buy new bras and all the things, you know. Can I ask <laughs> one more question um, in terms sure. of uh, your self-esteem and your own self-worth? Mm -hmm. You know, we're really not shallow here at ER Shred. Like, we think everyone has value. It doesn't matter whether people, you know, carry more weight or not. That's not what it's about. It's about right. well wellness, right? It's about wellness, but... Um, have you noticed an in, increase in your own, um, just in your own self-esteem? Have you noticed that? I actually have. And, you know, it's kind of hard because it's, I kind of want to be a humble person. Sure. But I get bragged to a lot, a lot. And I actually get asked on a lot of dates, but I don't want to do that. It's like, okay, I'm good. You know, I, people, I get this all the time you know, my cousin or my uncle or my dad you know, oh, you yeah. person. I'm like, wow. And that, you know, that didn't happen when I was in my 200 pound thing. So. <laughs> it's got to be flattering. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's good. Fun. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to just put us on gallery. I just want those that are on here to throw up swords for Patty. Patty is official ER hey. shred warrior. <laughs> You're amazing. Thanks, we are so Thanks. proud of you. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, thank you so much. I hope you'll keep showing up as you have been in the group and meeting more people and, you know, let us continue to celebrate you um, and let us get to know you better. Thank you so much. What a way to start the call. Guys, lives transformed. Oh my gosh. We talk about well-being, right? We talk about well-being. Well-being is like goes way beyond anything surface level well-being is is there's depth there's real depth it's joy it's living it's it's living life to the fullest it's enjoying life it's relationships it's just there's so much depth there okay next up shannon taylor are you there shannon i am what's going on shannon thanks for joining us thank you it's um good to be back yeah, you're back for an update. So, Shannon Taylor, where are you calling from? I am in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Who shared ER Shred with you? 
Um, actually, I had done isogenics for a while, much like Patty did, and um, it wasn't working for me the way that I wanted it to. And I had just come across ER Shred on um, Facebook. Oh my gosh. Just okay, cool. Hap happened upon it. Um, yeah. And I did it for a while and I am here with a dropout story. Yeah, I want to hear this dropout story. First, you have to tell us what is your passion? <laughs> what What is my passion? Mm -hmm. um, my, my passion right now is... Um, getting back um much like patty i had dropped over well over 100 pounds and i'm going to share too so, so we'll see if it shows up to you that was me before yes oh sorry and this is me now um i unfortunately uh said okay i've lost all this weight and i can do it on my own i was wrong um, you you lost all this weight which was did you say over a hundred pounds? Was it 112 pounds, 112 pounds. And then somewhere along the way, this, the mental shift, there was something that shifted and it was like, I got this, I can do this on my own. Yep. And I quickly discovered as the uh, scale and the bloat started to occur again. And I am now unfortunately 15 pounds up uh, that I can't do it alone. I can't do it. It, my my body preferred the less carbs, the no sugar. It worked for me, and I have discovered that it, it's it's not a quick fix. It's not you can do it on your own. It's not you know uh, I don't need the shakes. I don't need the no. I I really do. My body preferred it, um, and I feel like there's probably a lot of people out there um, in the same boat who, you know, had done it, done a couple of shreds, and went, "Okay, I got this." And that's not always the case. I think for everybody, I think it's it's more so that lifestyle change that it needs to be, rather than, you know, I've done shreds, I've lost weight, and now I can do it on my own. Mm, so good. Okay, so when you say on your own. You mean introducing more carbohydrate, introducing more sugar, and and there wasn't was there really a thought process there? Like I can do this, or did it just kind of happen? Um, it sort of just happened. Um, but I will say that it was not sugar. Um, I still to this day do not have any interest in sugar at all. Um, but it was more your potato and pasta thing. Starches. Okay. Carboholic patty. Right. Yep. Dirty carbs, starches. Yep. Yep. But it, I, I will, I will say, you know, as, as the weight started to creep back on, it was like, oh no, I got this. I got this. I got this. You know, I'll, I'll get right back. You know, I'll get there. Um, but the bloat is right back and it's horrible. Yeah. And my gut hurts, my joints hurt. And that's when I was like, no. Nope. I know exactly what this is. I've been trained well and I let it go too far. So enough is enough. Oh man. That's the, that's the, the part of the education, right? Like I think this happens and then people, they either feel hopeless. Um, they feel mm -hmm. shame. They feel guilt. Yep. Uh, they feel as though, you know, they blew it. And guess what we often do when we, we feel going like in the wrong we... direction. <laughs> yeah. We say, oh, what the hell, you know, I, I can't What's win. And we just, cake? yeah, that's right. That's right. How long were you able to maintain your initial results? Uh, it was a good six, eight months. And then it was yeah. a pound started to creep up. And then it was like, ooh, ooh. yeah, and you're not well, far. Five, I mean, it's not a big deal, but now it's a big deal. Yeah, no, in terms of weight loss, and I'm, I'm sure in terms of, of everything, because that's the cool thing is we jump back on the tracks and our bodies respond so quick. Mm -hmm. And so that's the good news that people shouldn't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so far gone. It's, I'm beyond hope. I might as well just oh, yeah, cave, no, no. I cave, I cave. No, and it is, and it, it, it is one of those things that, you know, it's, it's so easy to get so off track, but it's much easier to get right back on the wagon where you should be. Right, right. What, what, what role do you think the community and, and like community support, collective support, what role does that play for you? Oh, it's, 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 it's huge. And for, for me, it's my family. Okay. Um, my daughter even has like major 
gluten intolerance. You know, so for her, she was like, Ma, can we just have meat and butter for dinner? And she, you know, she much prefers it and she's much healthier that way as well. You know, and they'll occasionally on, you know, weekends, they'll make themselves, you know, some shake pancakes and stuff. So it's, it, it's certainly helpful, you know, yeah, and yeah. we're, we're all as a family looking to get back, you know. Yeah. Can I ask back. you like personally, a personal question, do sure. you, because this is the kind of the theme of your share. Mm-hmm. D- did you, have you felt shame? Have you felt guilt, remorse, regret? Have you <laughs> felt any of that? Uh, yeah. Cried myself to sleep a couple nights. Oh, yep. And that's, that's, that's when the light switch went off when no, you know, you, you need to stop this because when, I was, you know, I, I was, I was probably six pounds away from my goal and I screwed it up. So for me, it was that big pick in the keister that I needed to say, you know, you know, you let it go too far and you can't do that. And for me and not, you know, not everybody is the same, but for me, emotions are a trigger to food. So that's where I need to be careful. And I let the emotions control the food. 100%. 100%. And I think you're not unique in that way. I think that's many of us humans. (laughs) When I'm under stress, I, same thing, I kind of, you know, but I I wanted to make mention by way of education Mm -hmm. that, you know, please, everyone do not ever feel shame, guilt, remorse. I mean, I know it's human to feel it. It is, you'll feel it, but don't let it win because this is all a journey. Um, This is, you know, we don't have to ever look at this as an end goal. Um, This is never ending. This is a journey. And it's these kinds of things, I believe, uh, that are what actually empower us it's it's some call it failing some call it caving some call it breaking some call it backsliding whatever you call it it doesn't really matter but for her to recognize wait stop you're going the wrong direction stop let's get back over here that was working let's stay there for a while let's let's learn beyond that and for her to be able to, for Shannon to be able to always draw on that experience, that is the education. It, I know it seems simple. I know it seems like it's common sense, but it really makes all the difference. If it's the awareness, it's the consciousness, it matters. And for many people, Susan's on here, our health professional, Dr. Uh, or Susan Rothman, holistic nurse, and she's going to speak to us in a minute. But for many people, they're learning for the first time in their entire lives how to interpret the body's language, the, the way the body speaks to them. Now, you you mentioned, Shannon, a couple ways your body speaks to you. What were those again? The bloat. The bloat. I ha- and for me, major joint pain. As soon as I, you know, my, I live in a two-story log home. So as soon as I started going up and down those stairs again and my knees hurt, I went, it's not just because my knees hurt. It's because I'm not paying attention to my body. Right. And what do and most, that's... what do most people do when they have the joint pain and they have the bloat? What do they do? They run they... to their doctor and get a medication. For <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> well, I... that's, Sorry. That's, that's partly true. Um, but, but also another thing they do is they just ignore the body's feedback. That's dangerous. Yeah. Ignoring the body's. If you're driving down the road, you're driving down the road and all of the sudden the check engine light comes on and it's flashing check engine, check engine, check engine. Do we just keep driving the car? You don't put electrical tape over it. (laughs) (laughs) But that's what most people do when the check engine light is beep, beep, beep inflammation, pain, bloop, bloop, bloat, bloat, bloat. They go, eh, you know what? Something's wrong. Something's wrong with me. Couldn't be that something's wrong with something that I'm eating. It's just my problem. Probably just my fault. I'll deal with it. That's what most people do. So prior, prior, 
prior to ER shred itself, when I, you know, had dropped all the, all the weight that the bloat, the joint pain, this and that I attributed it to, well, I'm getting older. Oh, I hate that. I hate that so much. I hate that. I hate that. Susan hates that. <laughs> hates a strong word. And we hate that. James is on. Jennifer's on. They hate that too. And Don and Bob, we don't like that. We don't buy into that. I'm getting older crap. Yep. No, we do not buy into that. And I think we're all going to, I mean, are you our shredders seniors? They're mm -hmm. thriving. They mm -hmm. are thriving. I mean, they're killing it. So yeah, never buy into that. Any other words of wisdom you have for people before we let you go? Don't give up. Trust the process. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I like how you mentioned that, you know, for you, you know, the shakes, the supplements, it, it works. Be, and, and that was kind of by design. When we started ER Shred, it was like, wait a minute, the primitive way of eating can change your life. But what if we combined the old with the new. Why would we do that? Why would we combine the old and the new? Well, because by doing such, we're able to bridge the gap. Most people <laughs> could never live a primitive lifestyle. There's no way. They couldn't do it. But by leveraging modern scientific advances and using those, why? Because they're practical because they're convenient, because, you know, they're affordable, um, because it mixes things up and it's power packed. It works. The new and the old combined work. So I'm just thrilled to hear you, 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 you know, that your body's calling you back to that. That excites me. I love it when people come back. Um, Shannon, I want to say thank you so much for coming thank back and, and for, uh, for being so vulnerable. Thank you. Absolutely. Hope it helps somebody else. Everybody's throwing up swords for you, even though, you know, this Thank isn't you. your first time. We might as well throw up swords because it's fun. <laughs> You're awesome. You shredded that. Thank you. You're a dragon slayer. Thank you. All right, you guys, I want to say something about her share real quick. I'll be really brief. And that is this. You know, I've been in with isogenics for 21 years. And one of the things that broke my heart is to see people lose weight. And of course, you know, we had solutions to help people lose weight, but to see people lose weight and then to see them later and to see the weight packed back on. And me being a very sensitive, loving, caring person, I could feel for them. I could feel that they might feel as though they failed or they might feel as though they're imposters. And God, I hate that. Like, I hate that. And if any of you know me well, like, I have no expectation on everybody, you know, looking a certain way. I love people of all different shapes and sizes and colors, and I love them all. But I never, never, never want people to feel shame about, about rebounding. And so I want that to be a part of our culture is that we never, ever look down on someone because you just don't know. You don't know. Let me give you a better example and hit this home. John Anderson, the original formulator and founder of Isagenics, there was a time where he put on some weight. John's like an uncle to me. There was a time when he put on some weight. And I remember there were some people in my, in my team who actually said to me, why does John Anderson carry excess weight? That is not a good representation of isogenics and what we're trying to do. Man, that hurt me. That hurt me so bad because what they didn't know, which you never know another person's journey, so don't assume, don't pretend to, don't judge. Assume the best and give people grace because John had been through many different uh, health challenges, including a, a transplant surgery. And he was having some significant health challenges as a result of a brown recluse spider bite. Um, and it almost cost him his leg. And, and it ultimately caused him to get to, to need a transplant. And you know what? Nobody has a right to judge what he was going through and what those medications that he needed to take, the effect that those would have on his body. 
and so forth. And so Lee's, if you're an ER shredder and you ever feel like an imposter, oh no, I, I, I went off, I, I, I got off the tracks, I, I don't belong. Bullshit, bullshit, we're all human. You're going through what you're going through. You have unique stressors and, and you have, you know, all kinds of different things that many of us will probably not be able to comprehend or, or appreciate. We're not going to make that judgment on you. Don't feel as though we will because we won't. You're welcome. You're always welcome. Come back. Um, please come back if, if you feel called to. If not, we still love you. And, uh, you know, that's just like, this is an inclusive, tolerant environment. We're not better than other people. We're not the only way. <laughs> All right. I think it's important. And, and so, Shannon, as much as I feel very um, grateful and excited that you're, that you're called back and that you're back, I also want to say that um, had you not come back, you're still a shredder <laughs> and we'd welcome you back anytime. So thank you so much. Mike Witty, are you out there? This is our last year of the night. Mike, you're not on mute. I am. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great, actually. All right. Well, good to have you. Uh, where are you calling in from? Pleasure, a pleasure to finally meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We've we've shared a lot of uh, back and forth. So yeah, I'm grateful. Yeah, for I'm that. a I'm fun. a newbie. So I'm a newbie. I don't have uh, <laughs> a big a big loss or whatever. But no, um, for sure. Where are you calling from real yeah. quick? I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, cool. All right. Very cool. And I think, uh, the, I can't think of his name. The uh, Again, I'm new. So the yeah. one dude is definitely lives in Charlotte. Um, the, uh, nutrition. Oh, Jesse. Jesse, yeah. Yeah, Jesse. He's a good dude. He is in, he's in Charlotte, apparently. Oh, that's so great. I that's great. That. I hope you yeah. guys get to meet in person one day. That'd be great. Yeah. So, uh, and who shared ER Shred with you, Mike? Uh, that would be Don, Mr. Don. Don Drury, superhero <laughs> Don, amazing. Well done. How do you guys know each other? We don't. <laughs> how did he, how did he saw, come across you then? It was, it was a little weird, actually. Um, somebody posted on LinkedIn a picture of themselves, right? And I've, I've known this guy for 15 years, and he was like skinny. Right. And I don't think he did ER shred if I'm not mistaken, but I don't, I have no idea. But in any case, you know, I said, dude, what the heck? You know, you lost like 40, 50 pounds. I said, I've been just, how would you do? Me? Mike, I think you know your audio went out. We'll hold tight and see if Mike's audio comes back on board. I almost feel like he accidentally hopped off too. Hold on. And, and Mike is an AT guy, so he's getting it fixed. I see the headphones came oh, off. Oh, yeah. Oh, there he is. Don, you guys met on LinkedIn, huh? We did. I was, uh, whenever I see those pictures, I stalk the comments. And if people say that they'd like to know how to do stuff, I'll send them a, a LinkedIn private message and say, hey, you know, I lost 40 pounds, you know, and would, would love to share with you. And most people don't answer, but yeah. Mike did. And I see he's, he's connecting the audio here. So he's about on. You on, you on there, Mike? Has to unmute. You're it's, muted, Mike. Yeah, he was on there for a split second, I thought, and then, and then it muted. How about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're back on. Right, let me get started. Let me get to speaker though. Sorry about that. My speaker's um... The audio sounds almost like uh, muffled now, though. Does everyone else agree? I don't hear you guys yet, my bad. 
Yeah, almost like a little bit under underwater kind of thing. So Don, finish that process. You, you say to you say to Mike, "Hey Mike, um, check it out. I lost this forty pounds." What he writes back and says, "Tell me more." Now you need to unmute, buddy. There we go. Yeah. So essentially, yeah. So uh, Mike, like I say, most people when I do that, most people ignore me. Some people will respond, but but Mike ignored or Mike replied to me, and explained that his situation. Mike has had you know when he gets on here to talk, he he's had some health challenges and mm -hmm. uh, you know tried a lot of different things, and um, he said, "Hey, why not why not try this?" And what's interesting is as Mike and I are both in the IT industry, and we work for. Yeah, I, 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 get, I guess you'd say we're competitors, uh, although I'm in Michigan, he's, he's down in North Carolina, but the companies we work for run into each other every once in a while. So, um, so that's why I'm saying Mike's, Mike's an IT guy, he'll get, he'll get his sound figured out here momentarily. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, so we, we ended up having a phone conversation and we talked about the year shred and he said, uh, hey, I'm willing to try anything. You know, I, I, I need to do something. What I'm doing is not working. And I think, are you back now, Mike? I should be, how about that? It's a little, yeah. a little better, but not great. Wow. Oh, that's, that's a little better. All right, yeah, so I mean, basically- uh... Oh, that's better, yeah, keep with that. Hey, Mike, what's your passion in life? Uh, anything technical. Okay, okay. And what are all those, what are all those collector things behind you? What? What are all those collector type things behind you that I see? Uh, I read a lot of books. I like a lot of fantasy stuff. I'm really into muscle cars. I restore muscle cars. And I also, also do uh, astrophotography. Neat, man. You've got a lot of cool hobbies. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love to hear that. That's neat, Mike. And so, Mike, you you get with Don, and I mean, what what you just said? I'll try anything. I'll just try it. Is that how it was? Yeah, I mean, I've been heavy all my life, right? So I've been two hundred plus pounds since I was six grade. Always kind of husky pants. If you guys remember, um, back in the day, and um. Well, always been heavy, so losing weight was was difficult. It just never happened. Right? Um, I've been on. It might lean, lean in closer to your to your mic. It's a diet um, the last four years, thirty years, right? So it's it's been a year. Um, what do you think, Don? I think that audio is not working. I'm I'm having a hard time making out what yeah, he's saying. Yeah, it's, it's not great. Uh, Give me two seconds, I'll dial back in. I don't know. I don't apologize for that. So, how long is uh, Don? Tell us how long is, has has uh, Mike been doing this then? Well, um, it can't be much more than uh, if he's Three into weeks. a second shred. Um, Three weeks. He's third saying. shred already. So our third shred three or three weeks. weeks? Okay. I think he said three weeks. And and what um, kind of things? What kind of things do you have to report so far, Don? As you've been supporting him through. Well, I, you know, if we can get the sound going, I'd love Mike to share his results. I mean, because he, he had some significant uh, uh, issues, you know, prior to starting this, and uh, although we can't cure, well. prevent, or anything, you know, we we For can't sure. claim to do that, right? I mean, right. he's. He's got some great info uh, to share, and and I don't want to misrepresent what he is. Yeah, you know what? If, uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to do it uh, an injustice by having flawed audio. I'd rather have him back on if we can't get it right. I'll get yeah, it. Could. He said, "I'll get it. I'll get it." <laughs> I I agree with you, Sean. Um, 
about yeah. that. I want to hear yeah. Mike's story because Mike knows. Um, I was a little worried about Mike and I've been watching him and I re actually reached out to Don as well. So I very much want to hear his story. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us, as he said to me, Susan, so far, well, welcome, Susan. Thank, you, <laughs> thank, for, you, thank you for being on. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see everybody's faces. Oh, yeah. for sure. For sure. So, Susan, um, do you have anything that you would like to say about our, our first two shares? Yeah, I mean, I have. I, I apologize for being late. Patty, I kind of came on the tail end of you, but I know you've had a significant result. And I love what you shared about mobility because, you know, I'm also the years are going by and, you know, not having our mo mobility is probably one of the most scariest things that could happen and losing your independence and then to take that power back. Um, and of course, you've had an amazing result, so you must feel like a rock star. Um, and then uh, Sh Shannon, right? Right, Shannon, yep. yeah. Shannon actually shared something so powerful and so extraordinary about our humanness. And she had an opportunity, an experiential opportunity to see what wasn't serving her. And when she said that, she knew that emotional eating was a trigger for her. She's probably known that forever, but now she had a direct experience with it. And there's something about the ER shred protocol, the ancestral, the old meets new, that's innate and it pulls people back. Um, it's the most amazing thing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, these calls are just, they just absolutely fill you up. Mm, I think yeah. Mike, are and, you and back? I'm, I'm back in. I'm back in if okay. you need oh, it. Sounds I, good, I get, Mike. I do have some interesting things to share. So, yeah, please again, do. You know, I, again, you know, I've, I've had some medical issues of, over the past, and, uh, you know, it's caused me to gain weight, right, being on medication. And, I mean, I've tried Noom, I've tried Weight Watchers. Um, I go to the gym. I mean, I'll walk, I don't know, 20, 20 miles a week, probably 40, 30, 40,000 steps. I go to the gym and I get bloat. My legs swell up, my feet swell up. Um, I literally, was, which is kind of interesting, I wanted to mention this tonight because uh, somebody else was, was talking about the inflammation. Um, I had actually, messed up both of my Achilles tendons uh, last July, or actually August, um, in a surf, right? So, so riding, riding waves with my kids, right? So you jump up into the surf. Well, you do that for seven days, right? I pop, pop both my tendons, right? And they have hurt since last year, okay? And every morning I would get up, I would actually have to walk down the stairs sideways, okay? Um, until my until they loosened up and stuff like that. I, I noticed the last, I don't know, five, six days that my tendons don't hurt anymore. I used to have to wear like a strap on my on my ankles and I'm like, whoa, uh, wait a minute, my my legs don't hurt anymore. That's that's not right. What's going on? <laughs> so Man, that's cool. Know, that's cool stuff. It's, it's the swelling up. And the the most important thing I think so far, because again, I've tried all the diets. I bought a whole bunch of diet pills from, you know, internet things and, you know, carbs and no carbs and fasting and all this stuff. I literally returned a thousand dollars worth of diet pills uh, after I got on the call with, with, uh, with Don and went to, uh, awesome. you know, the, uh, the ER shred method. Right. So I, yeah. I sent them back. I got my money back, thankfully, because they didn't do it. Right. Um, and, and the one thing I've noticed that, um, you know, adding food back in, which is what I'm attempting to do, it's instant re instant feedback. Uh, you know, I was saying to I think Don or somebody with the I added cashews back in because they were like next to me, right? So I wanted something. I wanted something to chew, right? Something right. that was crunchy, right? I like meat. Don't get me wrong, but I need that crunch, right? Like a like a chip or something like that, right? right. So. I ate a couple of handfuls of uh, those and holy cow, man, I had such a stomach ache. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm not eating that again. So that's just really positive reinforcement, you know, on what you can and cannot eat. And it was just shocking. So 
evidently there's some food that I eat. I mean, obviously I like carbs and stuff like that, but there's something that I eat that really is just, is just killing me. Right. From, from a weight standpoint that, you know, it's probably something I've ate all my life. Right. And I just, you know, I don't know what it, what it is. Cause I'll swell up like, I'll gain 10 pounds in a week. I'll yeah. swell up like, you know, my, my legs, especially and yeah. my feet hurt like hell. So. Yeah. My dad, uh, for years, my dad would teach people that if you, if you ingest impurities, your body will actually retain excessive water. They call it edema Correct. in an effort to yep. dilute, dilute the toxicity inside of you. Um, your body's it's a, it's a protective mechanism that the body employs to try to, you know, prevent such harmful poisons and substances from, you know, having access to vital tissues and organs. Well, this yeah. is very exciting. I, I know your posts in the group, you've been active in the group. I've really enjoyed that. Um, one of your yeah. posts, was, one of your posts was like, I don't believe it. This is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean so far 12 pounds um you know for my first shred so that was you know 11 days uh it, it was absolutely easy peasy right i i was not i was kind of surprised because I, I was not hungry during the um the cleanse quite honestly the bone broth i mean drinking the bone broth and uh and the cleanse i had no issues at all so i wasn't hungry at all um I actually find that sometimes, and again, I don't know if I'm following protocol or not, but sometimes, you know, I'll have the shake, right? I typically have it by nine, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm not hungry. And and then it cuts to like four o'clock and I'm like, do I need, do I really need to drink my second shake or should I just, you know, go have steak or protein or something like that? So a lot of times I'll just skip that sh second shake, quite frankly. And I yeah. think that's perfectly fine. Right. I think I think you should feel it out. That's my opinion. Feel yeah. feel it out. Try right. different things. See what works. See what feels good. One of the things that I found, Mike, is you know eating enough of the right yeah. things mm -hmm. is critical. Is critical. Yeah. Eating yeah. enough of the right things is critical. And sometimes we say, well, you know, I don't need to eat more. But sometimes it's in our best interest to fill the tank. Um, and if you've gone a, a period of time. A significant period of time. I mean, it's different when you're fasting and cleansing and all of that. But if you've gone a significant period of time without servicing the body with that protein pacing, then it probably mm -hmm. is is a good idea to you know to fill the tank, even if it's just you know as much as much as you can till you feel satisfied. And another thing I found is it's empowering in terms of just squashing cravings for the wrong things. Um, yeah, filling filling got, up on the right cravings. things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. have no cravings at all, which is kind of kind of odd. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm really not a craving eater, quite frankly. I mean, I'm not a, I don't have a sweet tooth. Um, uh, I just, I don't know what it is, right? I mean, I mean, again, you know, my doctor's, you know, insulin resistance or something like that, because, you know, even when I went to the gym, you know, he would look at my Apple, Apple Watch, and you know, look at what I was doing on Noom, and he's like, you know, you should be losing weight, so more than likely there's something that I'm eating that's supposed to be okay, but isn't Yeah, right for my body. Yeah, that's right. That was me. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking to a guy who thought yeah. I was healthy. I thought I was healthy until I had a full blown health crisis. And then I started to ask myself like, what on earth is doing this to me? Like I thought I was healthy. Susan, what do you, what else do you have you'd like to ask of Mike or, or share around Mike? Well, I'm glad, you know, that you're doing so well, Mike. You know I was nervous yeah. about you, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I know you did say that. Not good. Yeah. All good. I, I'm so glad that that worked out for you. But what I will say, and I have this conversation, oh, my God, every single day about not eating enough protein. And the funny thing about that, too, is I have that issue, too, you know, where I'm not hungry. I feel fine. I feel satisfied. But, you know, for me, my goal is I want to build and maintain muscle. So I have to get in those protein stores. And the way yeah. we know that it's not enough is that, um, if, if the weight loss and the inch loss stalls, like that's your body's way of telling you that you might need a bit more because you're saying you're active, you're a big guy, you know, and, um, you know, you just might want to think about that as you go down. The road. You know, for me, that's interesting because I feel like I've stalled a little bit, quite honestly, because uh, I was kind of expecting, 
you know, after the shred, I lost all this weight. I was kind of expecting that, you know, eating, you know, just a couple shakes and, you know, a dinner that I should still lose weight. Right. And I really haven't. In you know, 10 it, days or so. Mike, if, if caloric restriction, which is what that is, was mm -hmm. the answer, um, every, everyone would have no problem. Apparently it's not. <laughs> Apparently it's no, not because no, that's listen. what I've been doing my entire life, right? Yeah. Is, so, is so restricting it's so, myself. So counterintuitive, all these myths that yeah. we're bombarded with. And so now where you're at is you are walking yourself into the truth, the truth of Mike, what's going to keep you well the rest of your life, what's going to change the trajectory of your health, which you've already done that, and then finding your own food blueprint, which you're already doing, which is my favorite favorite part of all of this and i do uh, are you done mike because i do have something i want to say in a story i want to share with you guys um you know i could i could talk for hours i mean i'm a sales <laughs> guy so <laughs> well just keep going you're an inspiration and i really have been um yeah. keeping my eye on you and i could tell i, I, I appreciate that yeah. Just the first few days and what you posted, I knew, you know, this guy's going to be okay. So yeah. I'm thrilled to hear I'm that. I'm very scientific. I have to know <laughs> exactly what's going on. And when something's weird, right, I ask questions, right? I mean, you know, the old. Good for the, you. The old excess stuff coming out of you. It's like, you know, okay, when I was, you know, on the shred, couldn't go to the bathroom. And now I'm adding food in and it's you know, not stop. So why is that? It doesn't make sense. Right. <laughs> and, you know, what you said, Sean, right. You basically were burning everything we put in our body. And I, to, for me to see that, like, like literally within a day or two, right. I, I, you know, my wife's meatballs, no pasta, none of that. She had the meatballs and the sauce and, and it was like, holy cow, what the hell, you know? Um, so now it's back to burgers and steaks. And, <laughs> it's a it's a rough it's a rough life you yeah know? And it keeps yeah i know better. it keeps getting better <laughs> yeah for sure well yeah. mike i just want to i want everyone to throw up swords for you because this was your first time coming on and i also yeah, absolutely i also wanted to invite you to please let us continue on this journey with you please yeah. continue yeah. to show up it's been so fun to to just watch as you learn and watch as you have these you know these moments of oh my gosh you know we we kind of call them aha moments like aha <laughs> so way to go mike so happy for you have you noticed anything yep. around the mental clarity anything around that yeah ener energy levels? i have yes absolutely oh good so yeah so I, so I found i found that one thing that was kind of interesting is that i found that um I was tired the first couple of days, sure. like super, super tired. And I'm like, okay, this is supposed to give me energy, right? And then again, you know, reading through the posts and all the stuff, right? I found that the reason I'm tired is because it's my body actually trying to get rid of the impurities and trying to replace bad material with good material. Um, I, I would say probably five or six days into the shred, I started feeling like I have energy again. But yeah, I definitely feel much more clear. There's, there's no doubt about that. That's exciting. That's exciting. Well, it's Susan, crazy. I, Susan, I, I didn't expect that. Okay. I am very skeptical. Okay. But then again, I'm very gullible too, because I bought a thousand dollars worth of diet pills. So, you know, <laughs> well, that, well, that just goes to show you, but, but again, that, that kind of goes to show you how desperate I was. Right. Because yeah. like I said, I'm going to the gym, I'm limiting my caloric intake. And I'm gaining weight. I'm like, what? This is this doesn't make sense, right? Even the trainer at the gym said, "You got to go see a doctor. There's something wrong." I went to my doctor. He did all the metabolic tests and stuff like that. Not perfectly fine. So I'm like, I don't know what to do, right? I mean, you know, you go into the gym three, four times a week, and you know, walking 30 miles in a week, and you're not losing weight. But how? How is that possible? So well, and and, and I'll I turn. Am. I'll let I'll let Susan close this out, but. Hence the reason we need to get out there and help more people, because how many people are there out there just like you who are trying to do everything they know how and mm -hmm. all the misinformation. And you, you're not getting yeah, yeah. And you sit there and you go, I can't win. I can't win. 
you know, so we, we really do have a solution. Susan, you wanted to share a story and, and close us out. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just, um, um, we're watching people walk themselves out of myths and actually changing belief systems, pushing back, taking back control outside of everything that they've been told, all the mismarketing, um, the things that have been crammed down our throats. And so for me, I've told many of you, oh, and before I forget, I just don't want to mix. Don, I want to wish you a speedy recovery. Okay, so I don't want to forget that. But, um, you know, I work in a functional medicine practice. And even though it's a more holistic, um, more progressive practice, we still have most people looking for the magic pill. And every day, it's actually quite frustrating. Every day I have the conversation that you're not eating enough. And what happens is on the phone or in person, I can actually feel the resistance. And I know that I'm butting up against a belief system, you know, and every day for me, sometimes I'll go in the bathroom and say a prayer is to find the way to um, create the opening, to create the space to get in new information. But I wanted to share for all of us as we changed our lives and many of us are sharing this forward and we want to pay it forward, give this gift to other people and impact on other people's lives. So I just want to share, having told you all that, so, how subtle this is. And I'm going to use my dog so I have a little dog, he's 13 years old, about 13 or 15, and I took him to his vet, okay? Now, Joey, my dog, is carnivore, as I am. He's grain-free, and he's been grain-free for years, and definitely even more so since the shred. So I walk into the vet's office, and she's examining him. She goes, oh, well... Uh, I said, I think he's around 15. She goes, no, nah, he can't be 15. He looks too good. I'm going to put him 13, 14. Okay. So she's examining him. He's a chihuahua mix. So he's probably a little deaf by now. No. Oh, well, he's a chihuahua mix. He probably is limping his back legs. <laughs> no. Um, oh, he's a chihuahua mix. He probably peeing a lot more and drinking a lot water. And I'm like, no. So she tells me she's, he's thriving, but he has to lose a couple of pounds. Okay. So then she asks me what I'm feeding him. And I tell her, same as me, carnivore. And then she starts telling me, see, here's the thing, man. She starts telling me, oh no, that's not good for dogs. It can kill them. They need grains. They need carbohydrates. So now here I am. I have an older dog. He's my baby. I love him. And so I am all in listening to her. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll give him some sweet potato. She goes, oh, and the food. You can just buy the commercial food. You don't have to buy those fancy foods. It's all bullshit. And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I, I didn't believe that. But I, I'm, I walk out of the office thinking, me, with all I know, thinking, well, maybe I should give him a little bit of grains. And then I got in the car and my mind got right. And I remembered, what am I doing? He's absolutely thriving. He's thriving. She's looking at him. He's thriving. And she's still going to tell me the myths. And that's the same thing that happens to me when I go to my medical professionals. What do you mean you're eating meat and butter? Well, you're looking at my labs. I'm like a teenager. But no, they can't. And so that's what we're coming up against. And so what all of you are doing, and this is why I said what Shannon said, is such an opportunity. It's such an opportunity to go further and break out and see what our operating systems are and when we eat. You know, we all have our journeys with that. You know, the first year, uh, I, I my cravings went away. And then my head would tell me I wanted this, that, or the other. And then I had to learn to pause and get myself out of that. And so, you know, this community, we give each other the tracks to run on. The other thing that was said tonight is about the education. I have people that came in this community. They just went on a diet. They didn't pay attention. They don't know why they're drinking the hydrate. They don't know why they're doing the bone broth. And they all fell off and they're like lost lambs where the people that opted in to take responsibility, get the education, play in the community, they're absolutely thriving absolutely thriving. So, you know, 
as you know, we on the board, so many, all of us are so passionate about this. And at this point, it's not about us. It's about what we're seeing here, you know, lives changing for the better. And, uh, you know, for me, who would have thought, like, I don't know, Mike, and he came in the group and I'm like, oh, this guy's got health stuff. I've got to watch him. I got to watch him. I got to make sure he's going to be OK, you know, and then to and then to be able to do that and see you here tonight. You know, so tonight I go to bed with my cup full. Beautiful. That's, <laughs> That's beautiful, Susan. Thank you so much. I loved your story. I love the, you know, with the dogs. I had the same exact thing. I put my dog on a carnivore diet. <laughs> and I went and read online and I saw all these posts as I was researching dog foods. I had all these posts that were saying carnivore diet is going to kill your dog and yeah. it's going to hurt, hurt this and hurt that and ruin this and ruin that. And, and then I got researching it more so. And what I discovered was the reason that vets are telling people that dogs can't go grain free is actually because the so-called grain free foods Look at the ingredient list. One of the first ingredients is going to be either potatoes or beans. So yeah, sure. In the grain-free foods, they're putting in things that hurt the dogs, that don't help the dogs. And, you know, yes. so you got to be careful. Those are the lower end brands. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not, yeah. So my dog, same thing. My Both my dogs, recovery, just absolute <laughs> You know, I pushed back and there are, I think, like three golden retrievers like had an issue. But who knows what people were doing? They're probably feed, feeding them so that Purina crap. That's right. Or the, That's or right. the, or the crap that that sell. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Well, anyway, thank you so much, Susan. You're amazing. Thanks for all your support that you offer. All of our our awesome ER shredders it means a lot to all of us. Thank um, thank you guys for being on tonight and we will see you in two weeks next week. Jesse, will have shredder lifestyle call. Um, we hope to see you all active in the group as well. And you guys, thanks so much. If you want to say goodbye, feel free to unmute. Good night, everybody. Good night. Great call tonight. Great Good night. Good night, everyone. Great call. Great testimonials. Sleep good all. <laughs> Good I'm glad night, the guys. job's good. <laughs> okay. Bye.